heading down to the scrapyard with a happy little load. And they look like a happy little load. <laughs> Got some decent stuff in here. Just a little bit of brass, a little bit of copper wire and that kind of stuff. Subject to today's video is this lead acid car battery. Yeah, that's an awfully clean looking one. What do you think? <clears throat> it's been used, I guess, but not very long. I'm gonna show you how to extract gold from a lead acid battery. It's a new technology. Maybe you haven't heard of it yet, but you're about to. Let's see what you do. As you take a C clamp, box knife, get some uh, plumbers, uh, seal tape, thread seal tape, some drywall screws. And then you'll want to get a pair of reading glasses and an aluminum carabiner. And we will also need a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, both, both kinds of screwdrivers, Sharpie, and what else will we need? Maybe this uh, can of rubber cement here. PVC cement, that is. That should work. And uh, while I'm here, I better check my oil. Put a reminder out for me right there. There we go. Oh, and some, some of these bits. Some different uh, variety of bits. Because once we, once we get in there, I'm not sure what we're running to. Okay, so after you get your tools assembled, what you do first is if it has a handle, you want to raise the handle. If it doesn't have a handle, don't worry about it. What you do is you go around to the back side of it and you give it a slight tap like that. Three times out of work. Then you go over here. You have to use your left foot once on this side. And then on this other side, you gotta use your right foot once. And then on the front, you're supposed to hit it twice with each foot. And now it's ready to go to the scrapyard. <laughs> Put all this away. I will show you in just a couple minutes. <laughs> About the modern gold. What you talking about, Mister? In the link I have, or in the description, I have a link to a really, really nice video explaining how what I'm getting out of this battery is not only gold; it's better than gold. It's gold 2.0. This is an oil sucking hog. I cannot believe how much oil it burns. I guess little motors burn a lot of oil. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna put down in the description a couple links to a couple videos. That I really would like you to watch for information. Cause this this gold 2.0 is very misunderstood and I see people make comments about it that basically is equivalent of saying that Superman goes around shooting spider webs out of his wrists you know or the spider man carries around and gets magical powers from a green lantern you know or Wonder Woman has a, a lasso that makes people lie you know <laughs> That's the misunderstanding with the subject we're going to get into here in a minute. First, let's go see how much we're starting with. I'm also going to the scrapyard, of course. Look at these prices coming up. We think it's the best price I've ever seen. Those are the cords, like off TVs and microwaves and stuff. But uh, anyway, I see a lot of people threatening to unsubscribe if I don't make the types of videos they want and stuff but uh, 
any subscriber that watches my videos knows that my scavenger videos are make, about making money. So if you have a problem with making money, you can go ahead and unsubscribe. And if you can't listen to what I'm about to talk about, when you unsubscribe, when you click that button, don't just click the button, take your whole mouse and just smash it to pieces because you didn't listen to me about what I'm about to tell you. At least watch the links, the videos that I have linked up in the description. So if you wanna make negative comments, the world's got enough negative comments, I, I'm not gonna listen to it. If you wanna, you wanna make comments, at least know what you're talking about. So you sound, you sound, you know, like, you know what you're talking about. Cause <laughs> there's nothing worse than someone making a comment. And just, this is basically delusional, so anyway. They want me to come inside. Okay, so I got a little over twelve dollars at scrapyard for that metal. We're gonna turn that metal into gold 2.0 as well. Nine pounds, that's kind of light. I thought it seemed kind of light. 20 cents a pound, five dollars 80 cents. And now for the second step in the extraction process go to your bank and deposit the money you just made. You got 18 dollars and 45 cents. I don't know, 20 times five is 100. So let's say a hundred. I got a hundred dollars of gold 2.0 right there. In about five, six, seven months, eight, nine, eight months, maybe nine months. What you talking about, Sam? Third step in the extraction process. Fire up your favorite digital device. Baby cook. And then proceed to Robinhood.com brokerage site. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin. I have made $7,000 in the last month. If anyone has a problem about me talking about this, particularly when so many people out there are having such a hard time with money, second week of January 2021, things might be getting even worse. So personally... Frankly, I'm, I find it offensive for those of you that demand I don't talk about this. And I think this video, if I talked about Bitcoin, might get 60% likes, 40% dislikes. Shame on you. People out there need money. I've made $7,000 off an itty-bitty, tiny, tiny little investment. <laughs> In the last month... Shame on you. Don't be so selfish. Lots of people want to hear this. I started talking about this four and a half weeks ago or so. Price was at $18,000 of Bitcoin. Now on Robinhood, you can invest as little as $1. People get confused. One Bitcoin is worth $40,000 today. Four or five weeks later, it's going to be at 65000 in a very short time. It's going to proceed to over $200,000, United States dollars. Most likely by the end of September. Shame on you for not letting me talk about it. Stop being so hateful in the comments. Do you really not? You really can tell me you're not interested in me? Me with a tiny, tiny, itty bitty little investment making $7,000 in the last month. Really? You're not interested in that? You're going to unsubscribe from my channel because I'm telling people 
about this massive, the most money I've ever made in my life during January of 2021. And you're going to threaten to unsubscribe from my channel? Shame on you. Unsubscribe then. Don't talk about it. Just do it. Stop being so selfish. Okay, y'all gone. Now the people that want to hear about it, give me a like down in the comments. and Maybe this video gets some traction. All the haters out there, shame on you. People are hurting. You should be ashamed of yourself. So here's my $18.45. I did it earlier. It's in there now. So if you were to put $100 in here, most likely it's going to multiply times five in about eight or nine months. There will be a fallback. There will be a point in time where you should probably sell what you put in. Like after it doubles or triples or quadruples. At some point, you want to sell a little something. You put a thousand dollars in. When it triples, take a dollar, thousand dollars out. That's not a bad idea. Make sure you take something out because it's going to pump way super, super high, and it's just going to have a natural, healthy fallback, like all stocks do. It's just a natural thing. Billionaires, the most, the richest people in corporations are pumping money into this. They're using it in place of gold. And check this out. In the last month, Bitcoin has doubled, while gold has been left in the dust. Right. If you really think about in the technology world, we talk about 10x improvements in products. Bitcoin is at least 10x better than gold in every way. Um, and so I think that if you just think of a Bitcoin product that's 2x better and market cap kind of follows that, that would put Bitcoin at a million dollars a coin, right? Just 2x gold market cap. And the key piece here, when I say those numbers, they kind of shock people, but we have to remember that both gold and Bitcoin are sound money principles. Gold is the analog application of sound money principles. Bitcoin is the digital application of sound money principles. And there is not a single digital product that replaced the analog product, but yet is still smaller than those analog products. The digital product is always bigger. It's a foregone conclusion at this point that not only is uh, Bitcoin's market cap going to flip gold. It's just a question: How much bigger is it going to be? Is it going to be two x bigger, five x bigger, ten x bigger? I don't think we know. Uh, and the timeline is a question, but it's a foregone conclusion, in my opinion, that not only is uh, Bitcoin a ten x improvement on gold, and the market cap is going to flip it at some point in the future. How does that one million dollar price target, if you want to call it that, change? Because right now we're talking about the replacement for gold. In, cor in the corporate world, it's also a replacement for cash these days because of what's going on with the U.S. dollar. So is that, and it's, you know, would that be a kicker on top of that million dollar price target, which is already so jaw-dropping? Yeah, I, I mean, look, from where we are today, it's about a 20x uh, increase. Right? And uh, the other piece of this that I think is really important to understand is that every single corporation, both in the United States and outside the U.S., is going to put Bitcoin into their treasury. They're going to have to. You're watching central banks around the world stuff the economy with liquidity, and people are running around saying, how do I protect the purchasing power? And so gold has served uh, that purpose in some treasuries, but I think Bitcoin uh, is just being underestimated. The fact that every single company uh, is publicly traded or private is going to end up putting Bitcoin in that treasury, that is a wall of demand that people just aren't accounting for. And so as we're seeing today, just Wall Street institutions are showing up here. Corporations really haven't shown up yet. And Bitcoiners don't want to sell the Bitcoin. And so you have this imbalance between supply and demand, and it's led to this rapid price increase because that's the only way you can accommodate everything. The Wall Street institutions have to keep bidding higher and higher in order to solicit uh, Bitcoiners to sell that Bitcoin. When the corporations show up, they're going to have to bid it higher and higher. Now, it's important to also talk about there will be volatility along the way. If you just lock on the idea that Bitcoin's digital gold, and you're just going to stack it up like like virtual gold bars in cyberspace, then uh, then I think you get pretty comfortable with it. Then then it's it's pretty obvious why you want it. It's a lot better gold than gold. At some point, I would think that all the gold bugs will realize that gold just doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't, it's not appreciating in value. It's not a safe haven anymore. It, uh, you know, its performance is abysmal. And so why in the world do you have any money invested in gold in the modern era when you could flip it over to Bitcoin?
Yeah, I agree. And uh, taking the properties of gold and taking the properties of Bitcoin, do you think, as of right now, that Bitcoin is more valuable or undervalued towards um, gold? And do you think that Bitcoin should take some of the market cap of gold or maybe even surpasses because it is superior? What are your thoughts about that? I think that the only reason that, uh, that people haven't sold all their monetary gold and bought Bitcoin is, is ignorance, fear, uncertainty. Like as, as the fear, uncertainty and doubt disappears, then it seems pretty obvious that, that the 10 trillion dollars that's sitting in gold should, uh, should, that energy should drain into Bitcoin and Bitcoin should grow at least to the monetary value of gold and then beyond because because uh, the reasons people buy gold are they want uh, a, a hard to debase store of value and uh, bitcoin is everything that gold is but better and so the only people that are holding gold are people that just don't understand bitcoin or they don't trust that they're they don't trust it because it's new so as the generational change, as, 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 as generations change, they'll start to trust it. And then there's an educational component. But you can see right now, if you go back six months and look at the price of gold six months ago versus today, it's gone nowhere. And go back six months, look at the price of Bitcoin versus today, you know, it's up by like nearly a factor of four. And so at some point, the price becomes the educator, right? The educational catalyst. There's an entire generation of macroeconomic investors this year in the last 12 months. I think they dipped their toe into Bitcoin and they had a good experience and they had a bad experience with gold. And so the logical thing to do is you rebalance your portfolio in the coming year and you increase your exposure to Bitcoin and you decrease your exposure to gold. And of course, if you, you know, if you reason from first principles, you know, like every, people, you know, in the community that are thinking hard about it, their conclusion is, well, 100% of my, of my portfolio ought to go into Bitcoin and 0% into gold. Why, why would you invest in an antiquated, obsolete store of value that's defective? Like, why would you put any money? It's like basically, I have wooden ships and I have steel ships. And a hundred years ago, people had wooden ships. And it worked a hundred years ago since there was no steel, but now we have steel ships. Now, why would you have half your Navy be wooden ships and the other half be steel ships in the modern era? It makes no sense. We used to do it another way, and now we have a new way. But I refuse to learn the new way because it's the new way. True, true. I mean, I, I wonder how you just...